I think for a long time, we've in the back of our head have thought that something more had to be done. And um, every time we'd get together and we'd play, oh, we gotta do a story, oh, we gotta talk about this, oh, we gotta share it with the world. I think that our time has come. And I think the Men's World Cup, you know, um, all the hoopla with that, and I think the world watched it more than ever before. So I think the world has starting to get on the bandwagon with this again, as far as USA. I, I got thinking more and more that in my time, and in our time, because we're running out of time. If we don't tell the story sooner than later, it's never gonna get told. Well, number one, every player was determined and passionate about what we were doing. And so everybody had that in common. And then we had quiet members of the team. We had um, some not so quiet members of the team and uh, you know, anywhere in between. So in, in any given moment, you couldn't tell what somebody might say here or there, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. You know, I, I appreciate the friendships that we had and the support and the encouragement, and it was nice because it's someone that's like on the same page as you. And you're, you're just sort of um, linked with them, and, and they, they understand you, and we have this great common bond, and, and it's such a unique experience. And every, for me, every square inch of it was fun. So. I, quite an adventure. It was an interesting year at the beginning, but they worked hard and they fought back hard and uh, they won, after those three losses, they won the games the rest of the season. I think there were 13 in a row. And they won confidence and they won feeling good about not only themselves, but their other teammates too, because they really began playing together and uh, not looking for somebody to pass to that they knew, but just passing the ball where the empty space was and where somebody was coming into it. And um, they, they did beautifully, they really did. I went to the 1999 Women's World Cup in California at the Rose Bowl, and I sat with 90,000 other spectators watching women's soccer. It was phenomenal. It was probably 90 degrees, the stadium was packed, and they were there to watch women's soccer. And I was watching Michelle Akerstall and so many other um, older athletes. I'm thinking, we could be doing this. You know, our generation could have done this. We all had this history. And now that it's coming out as to where it started and who started it and what school, you know, where is Cortland? What school was the biggest part of it is huge for me to see it come about. But in 1999, still people didn't know, you know, where is Cortland? Who won the first nationals? Um, so having this uh, presentation and, and this documentary on our team is, I think it's, it's, it's good for all of us to finally get the recognition that, uh, that we deserve. What they, what they were able to do in 1980 affected the 1991ers, the affected the 1999ers, um, because you can't, you can't build a house without having a foundation. And the foundation was kind of laid by these women and nobody ever sees the foundation of a house. Nobody ever cares about what the cement structure looks like or the bricks look like underneath the house. But the reality is, it's probably the most important part of any structure, of any house, or of any building. You need to have a solid foundation, and that's where you guys come in. The people who, who did it without asking for anything. The people who did it without asking for a handshake or a slap on the back. The people who almost have gone anonymous up until, up until this moment. So. We've come a far way, and it's it's brilliant that that we can even have these conversations. You know, we're what is it, 34 years ago? This is this is kind of where women's soccer kind of started that imprint, like I was saying. And in order for us to continue moving forward, we always have to be appreciative of of those foundation layers, and you guys are that. It's unbelievably special, and. One situation that I have, that I have a unique situation that I've been coaching a long time, collegiate soccer. I actually play against Cortland now every year. And I've been a long time collegiate coach. It's these moments, like when we came back in 2000 for our team being honored, it's this moment right here that when I go back and talk to my Brockport team, I talk to them about 
I'm gonna do everything I can so that you're a part of a team that gets to have these moments because it is indescribable what these moments are like to be able to be this. The only way I can express it is that I couldn't have been happier to be the team that got to take showers, order pizza, and drive 40 hours back home. I mean, there's no other, no other place I would, would have rather have been. I mean, I talk about that story with my daughter, and um, that journey was one of the best journeys I've ever had. And that's why we can get back together after 10 years and just feel so comfortable with each other. That we could pave the way and that we could get to women's soccer to where it is today, I, I, I'm happy about it. I, I don't feel like, oh, I wish we would have had more opportunities. Because in my opinion, we had an opportunity and we seized it and we took it. Great moments are made from great opportunities, right? And we took that moment and we made it our own. And, and how could you do more than what we did? I'll tell you, you know, winning a national championship, and, I, and I'm sure that, you know, the kids that are winning today can tell you this, but it's, it's an easy way to cash in at happy hours, really. We did well. All right, you're done.